thank you so much for coming to this fourth session of the Kairos Gathering 20 Years of Spirited Action for Justice. My name is Shannon Neufeld. I am um, part of the Kairos staff, and I'd like to introduce Ed Bianchi, who was for many years the Indigenous Rights Program Coordinator, now the Kairos Program Manager. And so, Ed, take it away. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shannon. Um, <clears throat> um, yes, as, as Shannon mentioned, I'm, the, I'm currently the program manager at Kairos, but uh, for many years, I was the Indigenous Rights Program Coordinator and actually was the first Indigenous Rights Program Coordinator coming from uh, the Aboriginal Rights Coalition, which is one of the predecessor coalitions of Kairos. And I'm really, uh, really honored that uh, you chosen to sort of spend some time with uh, myself and members of the Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle for this workshop this afternoon. Um, I'm going to keep my comments very short. So what I would like to do then is just start with the territorial acknowledgement. And as I was saying, some of you might be aware that uh, in New Brunswick recently, the government of New Brunswick ordered its employees not to uh, use territorial acknowledgements at public events, or at least uh, not to use them and uh, include the words unceded or unsurrendered, uh, in part due to uh, legal actions that are before the government of you know, New Brunswick from the First Nations in that jurisdiction. So let's keep that in mind as we uh, acknowledge that uh, we're meeting today uh, on the traditional territories of the Indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, and that we are grateful for them allowing us to gather uh, and meet and learn together on their territories. I acknowledge that uh, I am the unceded and unsurrendered traditional territories of the Algonquin peoples, um, and that uh, we honor the struggles and the lives of all those who gave themselves for the land and for all our relations. And for those here today, we acknowledge the ancestors beneath our feet and we acknowledge the land. We acknowledge the traditional territories of all the nations, the Cree, the Dene, the Soto, the Anishinaabe, the Dakota and Lakota, the Blackfoot, the Inuit and the Métis, and all the nations that came before us and those yet to come. We affirm our relationship to each other and to the land, and we acknowledge and pay respect to the Indigenous nations and ancestors of this land. So I want to um, be briefly introduce uh, the members of the Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle who will be uh, participating in the workshop today, um, and then ask them to sort of say a few words about themselves and then we'll get into the program. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Yvonne Bearable. Uh, Yvonne is the executive director of the Kenora Fellowship Center. Uh, she's a member of the Birdtail Dakota First Nation, and she served on the nation's band council for 14 years. And before joining the fellowship center, she was director of the Edmonton Urban Native Ministry. I'm better was there. Chantema was there in a pay to use a PA. Damakota Hecha. Chancago Tina Hamataha. It is a good day, and with a good heart, I shake all of your hands. I join you here from the traditional territory of Treaty 3, homeland of the Anishinaabe. I acknowledge <clears throat> any residential school survivors and knowledge keepers that are here with us today. <clears throat> My name is Yvonne Bearable. I am Dakota from the Bertel Dakota Nation in Manitoba. We are non-signatory to treaty. I'm the executive, executive director of the Annamawegmug Kenora Fellowship Center in Kenora, Ontario. <clears throat> I'm also with the Presbyterian Church in Canada. And it has been my privilege to be part of the Indigenous Rights Circle for the last three years or so. And I've enjoyed meeting the members, staff, and being part of the collective, ever-revolving and more inclusive and engaging work 
Congratulations to Kairos on your 20th year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, next, I'd like to uh, introduce Gisitanamuk. Uh, Gisitanamuk is Wampanoag from the community of Mash, B, located uh, on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Gisitanamuk is a longtime Indigenous rights activist and advocate, uh, especially on things like cross border issues, the Wabanaki Confederacy, building cross cultural relationships and uh, treaties. And uh, I can safely say, I think that uh, Gita Tanamuk is one of the longest serving members of the Cairo's Indigenous Rights Circle. So it's great to have his perspective and long view on this panel today. Uh, um, I'm really grateful to be here. I, I have, um, um, for the past 20 years or so, I've uh, been really privileged to, to be with the um, Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle. Uh, I feel uh, very oh, connected, if you will, to Kairos. And I have a very deep uh, love for the organization and for the people uh, past and, and present and future. Uh, and I'm very honored to uh, be called upon to uh, come and share some thoughts with you. And I'm probably one of the few Kairos members or uh, indigenous rights members that are not affiliated with any religious organization. Uh, but I do come from a natural spirituality with the earth and, uh, and um, uh, just so deeply appreciative of, of life and existence. So um, thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you, Gisitanamuk. Um, another way to describe Gisitanamuk's affiliation is member at large. So let's, we'll keep that in mind. Um, and uh, finally, <laughs> yeah, not large member, but member at large. Um, finally, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn to Jose Zarate, uh, who is the Canadian Indigenous Communities and Latin America Caribbean Development Program Coordinator for the Climate World Relief and Development Fund of the Anglican Church of Canada. I would love to see your name tag there, Jose. Um, <laughs> Jose is uh, Quechua from Peru, uh, moved to Canada in 1984, earned his PhD in education and international development from the University of Toronto and has worked at the Primus World Relief and Development Fund since 1996, which is about the time that we met, around that time that uh, we met. So I, we don't call him Dr. Zarate, but... Um, you know, if you feel like the need, then that's okay. Thank you, Ed, for that uh, lovely introduction. Yes, we know each other for many, many, many years um, uh, doing um, the work that uh, we were called to do. Uh, very honored, uh, uh, humble uh, to be uh, invited to, the, to this event. Um, in addition to what you mentioned about uh, who I am, uh, I, I would like to add that I was adopted uh, by the Nishka Nation um, uh, into the uh, Killer Work Clan. And also I was given the Eagle Feather by the Mi'kmaq people from Nova Scotia. Uh, yes, um, again, very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, so we're going to um, get into the program now. Uh, I'm gonna ask the uh, three members of the Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle to answer three questions. The first question is clear. Please share one highlight from your indigenous rights work with Kairos. The second question is, what is the most pressing issue facing indigenous peoples today? 
And the third question is, what change do you hope for going forward? And how can Kairos contribute to bringing that change about in the next 20 years, in the next 20 years? Um, and then, um, you know, before that, we're going to show uh, some uh, pictures uh, which highlight a few of those special moments over the last two decades. But before that, um, uh, we would like to ask that we, um, that you join us in a moment of silence uh, for the children uh, and the discoveries, the recent discoveries uh, across the country um, at the former residential schools, a uh, moment of silence to honor and respect them uh, and knowing that there will be many more discoveries. So please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Um, like I said, um, we'll get to the questions right after I share my screen. And this uh, slideshow that uh, has been prepared, uh, I'm going to, there's about 25 slides here. I'm going to go through them quickly because I think what we want to do is uh, hear from our Kirk members. But this will bring back some memories. Uh, what I've tried to do here is Again, uh, highlight some of the events over the past 20 years related to the Indigenous rights work at Kairos. So um, tw in 2001, uh, Kairos uh, launched a campaign called Land Rights Right Relations as part of the Jubilee campaign. And there was a petition on Aboriginal land rights that garnered over 50,000 signatures. Um, so, you know, it wasn't very long after that, um, that uh, over a thousand blankets arrived in Ottawa and were spread out on the lawn of the Supreme Court of Canada. Uh, these blankets were part of workshops that were held across the country that, uh, you know, were, were to raise awareness and understanding of Aboriginal uh, Indigenous rights and included the petition in the workshop. So a lot of the signatures gathered were from those workshops. Um, there's uh, one of our panelists uh, sitting on the blankets in front of the Supreme Court of Canada on that National Aboriginal Day 2001. In 2003, 2004, Kairos, uh, and at that time it was called the Aboriginal Rights Committee, uh, worked with the uh, Native Women's Association of Canada and also uh, some of the member churches, the United Church and the Anglican Church, to help the Native Women's Association of Canada gather, uh, get funding from the federal government for what was then called the Stolen Sisters Campaign, which then became Sisters in Spirit. Um, in 2004, Kairos uh, and the Indigenous Rights Circle hosted the Indigenous Water Rights Forum in Manitoba. In 2006, Kairos hosted the, tu the Tucho International Indigenous Water Rights Conference and there is uh, Chief Fred Sangri um, on the shores of the Great Slave Lake. Uh, 2007, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Anu Covenant towards the constitutional recognition and protection of Aboriginal self-government in Canada. In 2010, and this was mentioned this morning at the plenary, there was an ecumenical delegation to the Tar Sands that included uh, uh, um, Ray Jones, who you'll see on the left-hand side there. Um, in 2010, 11, uh, Kairos released the land rights, the, the land, our life, uh, indigenous rights and our common future education and action guide. In 2011, uh, the role with the declaration uh, campaign, uh, which involved uh, asking people from the networks across the country to design banners 
related to the uh, UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And we gathered, I think it was close to 300 banners. And here's just a very small sample size. I think somebody said it took nine minutes to walk all the banners past one point. Uh, for those of you who know, who know Ottawa, all the banners were gathered at Victoria Island and then marched uh, across uh, Parliament Hill to the Human Rights Monument. Uh, and some of the people who participated with us were from Sopapamek uh, in BC. And uh, this was taken just before they got on to Ottawa. Um, in 2012, uh, Cairo sponsored a youth delegation to the United Nations. Uh, these youth met with the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child talk about some of the human rights challenges facing Indigenous youth in Canada. Uh, uh, third from the right there is Helen Knott, who uh, was presented at the one of, uh, on Sunday at the um, Unstoppable workshop. Um, Priscilla Solomon this morning at the plenary, who uh, Priscilla used to be a member of the Indigenous Rights Circle, mentioned how um, Kairos and the Indigenous Rights Circle, in order to further its Indigenous rights work, uh, um, started meeting uh, in communities or um, in different regions of the country. And here we are in uh, Gizitanamuk's neck of the woods um, in 2012 at the Kirk Fall meeting. Um, so the next year, uh, Kairos participated in uh, the national TRC education event in BC and presented uh, a gift to the Bentwood Box. And there again is uh, uh, Kirk co-chair Ray Jones, hereditary chief from Gitsan. Um, the next year, we traveled to Cree territory, uh, Mysticini in particular, uh, to hold our meeting there. And um, and uh, that was uh, you know one of the one of the last meetings that Warren Almond attended. Uh, Warren's uh, in the background there. Um, he passed away a few years ago. Um, our other co-chair, the other co-chair of the Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle, Joanne Jefferson, uh, in the in the yellow uh, jacket there, um, attended the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues in New York. And then in 2015, uh, to mark the release of the um, calls to action and executive summary of the Truth and Reconciliation of Canada's report, Kairos worked with the Assembly of Seven Generations, a youth-led group here in Ottawa, to host the first mass Kairos blanket exercise on Parliament Hill. There's a shot from that. Um, Kairos was also very much involved uh, with uh, trying to uh, get uh, provinces and territories to comply with Call to Action 62.1, which was all about education uh, and mandatory curriculum from kindergarten to grade 12. And so here's uh, one of the memes that was created for that campaign. And there is an example of one of the petitions that uh, was signed. Um, another time that uh, Kirk traveled was to uh, Edmonton, in 2016 for its fall meeting and we met at the uh, but we met in Edmonton at the Edmonton Native Healing Center uh, but one of the visits that we made was to the Crown Makers Lodge Treatment Center. In 2016 the churches Kairos uh, and other churches responded to the call to action um, and uh, did so with the press conference on Parliament Hill in 2017, again, to celebrate the anniversary of the TRC, we held what is called the Kitchi Blanket Exercise. Kitchi is, uh, means really big in the Algonquin language. And here you can see that following the exercise, uh, all the participants uh, basically created a circle, linked arms and hands and created a circle, which went all around the uh, lawn in front of the parliament building. So those of you who are familiar with that lawn know how big it is and how many people that represents. In 2018, uh, we continued with the call to action and campaign on 621. And here is some of our BC uh, network members uh, presenting uh, petitions uh, to the BC, legislat BC legislature. Um, 
Kairos did a lot of work around Bill C-262. Um, and here's one of the memes that was associated with that. Uh, 2020, the year of prayer and the traveling sacred bundle. This is an initiative of the steering committee, um, which, um, uh, which was marked or, or at least launched with a ceremony at the Toronto office in, uh, in, at the office in Toronto, at the Kairos office in Toronto. And uh, so you know, this was one of the last public events that Kairos uh, held before the pandemic shut everything down. I think it was, this was March 11th or 12th um, in Toronto, uh, in the Toronto offices. And then, you know, the programs got shut down March 16th. The bundle was meant to travel across the country um, uh, but, you know, made it to far as far as Winnipeg before the restrictions took place. So that's something we're looking to get back to at some point. And of course, um, Bill C-15, an act respecting the UN Declaration, was I was advocated for and uh, the, which, the, which was passed. So that's, um, that's a trip down memory lane. Um, I hope I didn't go too fast, didn't cause anybody you know, to get dizzy or anything like that. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to make sure that we gave our panelists as much time as possible to answer their questions. And so um, I'm going to start with the first question, which is, once again, please share one highlight uh, from your Indigenous rights work with Kairos. And uh, we're going to start with Yvonne. Thank you, Ed. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you for holding the moment of silence in memory of all of the children. This afternoon, I hold that silence for a teen from my home community who died this morning as a result of trauma. Prayers for her family who are faced with such stifling grief and for our youth who are facing such trauma. It has been my privilege to share grassroots perspective working with the homeless population and the impacts of the Indian residential school intergenerational trauma. We witness daily the level of devastation that is happening on the streets and in First Nation communities. It has been important to bring that voice to the circle and how crucial the work is to bring about change. It has been encouraging seeing more Indigenous people involved with Kairos throughout the years and the solidarity that has resulted as we face difficult issues. The work of reconciliation involves creating spaces for sharing our truths, promoting healing and seeking justice. We must continuously stand strong to make sure that every child does matter. Lives truly are at stake. We are thank I am thankful for all of the support and the advocacy. Padamaya. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, next, I'd like to uh, go do Gizitanamuk. Thanks. <clears throat> um, I know that uh, I was supposed to respond to one, um, one memory, but I'm going to give you two. Both were really, really, really um, deeply impactful for me. One was, uh, I guess, the first one. Um, I had my suspicions early when, uh, when um, um, the Aboriginal Rights Coalition was moving into Kairos, um, and so I, I kind of uh, followed Ed into that, um, into that great unknown. Um, wanting to uh, check this new entity out. And I think it was that, that first initial meeting, um, somewhere at the, somewhere in that meeting, uh, I was invited to do um, a stomp dance or a snake dance. And uh, I can't recall what the population at the time, but that that picture of that great circle around parliament kind of reminded me that it had to be a hundred people in that, in that snake, that snake dance. And it was really, <laughs> it was really impressive. I've never been um, uh, dancing with so many people. 
in that particular one. And in that one of the aspects of that snake dance is that at one point it it coils around, so it was a really tight circle of of bodies. It was really uh, left me with a great impression. And the other one was uh, a meeting, one of our Kirk meetings, and uh, it was the time when um, um, uh, we were poised with a question uh, to comment on a statement that um, Kairos was coming through, I think in support of, of, um, of the TRC work. And, uh, you know, we're very generally the, the, the question seemed to be okay, but there were some things that were left out and I was kind of concerned about that. And I raised the issue of treaties and the issue of section 35 and 25 and that, you know, and, and I didn't want to cause a damper on, on our meeting. And um, uh, I just can't think of his name right now. Uh, but the moment I said that, um, he, uh, he also uh, uh, supported that statement. And uh, 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 somebody jogged my mind. Uh, Ed, he was just featured in that uh, picture and I can't, I, I don't remember. You mean Warren? Warren, Warren, yes, Warren. Warren, Al Warren Allman. Warren yes. I, I just so loved that man. Uh, you know, part of it was was because uh, uh, he was very part of the uh, um, the uh, the governance of Canada and served many different ministries. But it was so interesting for his his uh, perspectives on on government policy and and working within ministry and so forth. But when he agreed with me, when he joined in that. Uh, and, and talked about it from his lens, uh, I was just so deeply moved by that. And uh, those are really, and, and, you know, 20 years of this experience, I can think of so many, many more, but, but those two particular uh, were highlighted in, uh, in thinking about our experiences in Kirk and with Kairos. Over to you, Ed. Thank you very much, Gizantano. I'd forgotten about that snake dance, so thank you uh, for bringing that back to mind. Um, Jose, you're up next. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, uh, the work that we do uh, at the Climate Seguro Relief and Development Fund uh, since 1996, and we were quite close uh, in the work that uh, used to do uh, at that time, ARC, the Aboriginal Rights Coalition, that began to be part of uh, what is today the Indigenous Rights Circle. Um, so we are, um, uh, it's difficult the question that you ask because uh, it is more than just one issue that uh, really impacted me, uh, uh, personal level, institutionally speaking too. Um, as an indigenous person coming from a uh, uh, Latin American country, which has been oppressed by regimes, uh, military regimes, uh, uh, and government that violate human rights, um, uh, I was sh shocked uh, when I heard for the first time the initiative that uh, at the beginning was carried out by the, uh, the Canadian indigenous, uh, Canadian National Aboriginal, what is the name? Uh, the, Native Women Association, I believe, in Ottawa. And, uh, and they were working uh, around the issue of uh, 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 the disappearance of women, you know. And that began to be um, today, uh, sister and spirit. So it was an evolution of years. Uh, and little by little for me to be uh, as, uh, you know, by doses, by the media, how the media control that information that people are, uh, weren't aware of what is uh, happening through the history of uh, Native women to be killed, you know, that's the term, kill. Uh, and then finally the um, RCMP produced this report, uh, you know, uh, recognizing that effectively there was a killing of women, indigenous women, you know. And this bring me, um, also uh, impact uh, uh, thinking about my indigenous uh, roots in, in the Andes uh, where uh, uh, women who have the, uh, the gift, the miracle of life bring 
uh, responsible for future generations to be also uh, annihilated, you know, annihilated. Uh, it's a real genocide that happens uh, uh, through the years in, in Latin American countries. So for me, that was an issue that uh, really uh, wake me up that, uh, uh, that this is not only what happened in Peru or Mexico, but also happening in Canada. Another issue was, again, I said that it's impossible for me to say just one. It, it, it was the invitation that uh, to, uh, with Kairos, uh, Kirk, the Indigenous Rights Circle, uh, to this um, International Indigenous uh, Warrior Rights uh, Conference in Northwest Territories. This was organized by the, um, I don't know if I pronounce correctly, Akaicho Territory, you know, by the Dene the Nation there in Northwest Territories. Uh, it was unique because um, it was a grassroots level conversation. Uh, they were then uh, uh, leadership at that event, uh, but also it was the it, it there was a flavor of international perspective because they they raised issues from other uh, um, uh, nations in the world. And for me, it was an opportunity to talk about Bolivia. Um, uh, Bolivia at that time uh, uh, elected uh, indigenous president, uh, Evo Morales. And uh, Evo Morales uh, in Bolivia was able to um, stop the um, privatization of, of the water and um, keep the water for the people. So that was also, that conference also struck me uh, as a, a, as a how can I say that's a motivation for, for me uh, 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 to be continue working with, uh, with Kirk in, in this area of water. Yeah, those are the two areas I will say. Thank you, Ed. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, all three of you for answering those questions. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the current uh, Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle co-chair, Ray Jones, um, was hoping to be on the panel as well, but uh, due to a conflict, uh, wasn't able to join us. But he did give us answers to these questions. So I'm going to read out his answer to question number one. He said uh, that one highlight of his uh, work with Indigenous rights uh, at Kairos was getting to uh, visit so many First Nations communities. He said this was very important to sit down with the respective leaders and hear their concerns. And that Kairos through Kirk, uh, being able to address these concerns as much as possible, especially uh, with, the, with the federal government. And uh, Ray said he particularly remembers uh, the, his first Kirk meeting, uh, which was in Edmonton and uh, hosted by... Uh, um, Harold Roche uh, at the Native, uh, at Native Healing, at Edmonton Native Healing Center, and that was in 2004. So, a little bit of history there. Um, okay, on, on to question number two. Um, what is the most pressing issue facing Indigenous peoples today? And once again, we'll go to Yvonne to start. Thank you again, Ed. So I think it is important to not only view all of the pressing issues that directly impact Indigenous people, but to view it as a national crisis. Continued awareness about the doctrine of discovery, colonial systems and the trauma and discrimination which continues to prevail and continue to devastate Indigenous nations. Further to this is how do we decolonize as indigenous people, as settlers, um, what does that mean? It's something that I struggle with and many of my indigenous brothers and sisters also struggle with, how do we decolonize? Taking into consideration the impact of colonization and somehow coming to terms with that. It's been very challenging. Um, at the different tables that we've sat around. Um, how do we look through the lens of decolonization in our workplaces, in our ministries, with our behaviors, our allyship and our attitudes and even how we treat each other. 
and righting the wrongs in so many instances that we have so many opportunities to, to do that on a daily basis. One way has been through the blanket exercise. Often we have heard that it was a blanket exercise run directly through Kairos or indirectly that first helped them understand they needed to upend their whole worldview or to some extent and commit to reconciliation. The blanket exercise has helped to deal with all of the complexities and guided conversations which are crucial to the work of reconciliation. One of the hardest um, or the most difficult um, blanket exercises I've been part of um, as an Indigenous person was um, conducting them with other Indigenous uh, people um, in circles where there have been residential school survivors and a lot of our um, young people or people in general who do not know our own history, the impact of the residential schools and you know some of the terms of doctrine of discovery, terra nullius and, and all those terms that really don't mean anything but have had such a huge impact on our lives. So, you know, those complexities um, and, you know, those guided conversations are so necessary and very thankful for um, the blanket exercise, how it's evolved. And yeah, I think that one of the most pressing things is how do we reconcile within even our own selves um, as we try to stand with everything that's coming towards us. Damae. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, Gizzi Danamuk. Wow, it's, it's, it's really a big question. And, um, you know, it, it, if we can be um, encouraged, you know, I, I think about, I think about Kairos and Kairos is kind of a mini cosm of, of what, what both Canada and the world needs to be doing, you know, and reaching out and being supportive. Um, there's just so many things that come to my mind. Um, you know, and I really appreciate what, uh, what Yvonne was just saying. Um, uh, and particularly around the issues about decolonization, uh, I take it one step further. I'm known to be pushing the, the envelope a lot. Uh, I'm thinking about more like deconstructing what was brought here. Canada has yet to um, I, you know, it sounds kind of strange, but you know, uh, Canada does this thing with, with Indian country quite often, says one thing, but doesn't do anything kind of thing. And, you know, the, in, in this particular case, Canada has constitutional mandates to recognize the treaties and the validity of, of, of the importance of treaties. And the United Nations is just starting to catch up with Indian country on, on matters of treaties like that. It's hard to believe that, that Canada is still in a very quiet way uh, in, through its Indian policies and legislations, still involved with genocide. Genocide is not just the, the, the fact of going out and killing people, it's creating the conditions that will lead to the end of a people. And, and Canadian Indian policy is very much like that. Reconciliation is yet to begin it's a big question, and it kind of follows through with this with this idea about decolonization, you know. And, and so I'm really big on the idea that Kairos is one of those few organizations that have um, made uh, a purposeful and intentional uh, journey into um, of embracing the huge gap between indigenous peoples 
in Canada and in, in Western countries, United States in Canada are very much in the same pot. And I think that um, we need to, to, to celebrate you know, those kinds of initiatives and in in that kind of strength and conviction and persistence uh, because that's what's going to get us all through this. We have yet to establish a relationship. You know, and so I, that's why I'm so fully embracing the work of Kairos in this because they're doing it. And, um, and it makes me really, uh, really persistent in being part of this organization on many levels. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Gifted Animal. Jose? Yeah, thank you for my uh, colleagues, uh, Yvonne and Mr. Tanamo. Uh, so much uh, in terms of uh, priorities, you know. Uh, we had um, pressing issues. What, we have the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples Report, 96, I believe. Um, then we had the... Um, uh, all this process of consultations through the United Nations, what is today the UNDRIP. Uh, we have the recent report from the TRC um, called to Action 48, you know. Um, we have visited uh, communities since 1996, indigenous communities, First Nations uh, across Canada. And uh, a common denominator a common concern, I will say a common interest from those communities is whatever we do, we have to think about the seventh generation, about the future gener generations. So any activity that uh, communities um, want to start implementing with um, uh, involvement, collaboration, partnership with uh, the Primates Water Relief and Development Fund it has that key ingredient, future generations. For instance, the Sisica people uh, near to Calgary, in Alberta, um, after the unmarked uh, uh, grapes that finally the entire world uh, uh, was informed about these genocides. The Sisica people uh, has been working uh, low-key to convert, to transform a local resi residential school into a virtual museum. A virtual museum that will always be there to remind uh, people, the audience, about the history, the history that the Sisica people has had until today. And for the only generation to remember where they're coming from and where they're going from there to the future. The Mohawk communities in Kanawaki remind us how important it is to preserve the language, indigenous language. And, and this is just my opinion. I think it's the only one. I'm not sure about it. Uh, uh, through the years, uh, I, uh, it's the only case that I know that the Kanawake Mohon community um, has this local law, language law, that they have as a uh, as a ultimatum goal to uh, reverse the uh, disappearance of the language in the community. And this law uh, applies in the entire community, Kanawake, that everybody has to speak the language, particularly those who has frontline service to the community, you know, all those bank consoles, uh, social services, all of them uh, is the priority that they should speak the, the Mohawk language. They just, this past December, they just celebrated 20 years. And you, are, you cannot believe the amazing work that the um, 
this institution, KOR, uh, KOR LCC is doing uh, in Kanawake, you know? And they're using one of the tools that they're using is fantastic, it's so creative. It's, uh, so creative people. Uh, they're using uh, the equivalence what the kids in the mainstream society has the Sesame Street. So they have the puppet show, you know, representing by um, uh, the three sisters, uh, uh, the corn, the beans, and the squash. And they have the grandmother and a grandchild. And they have this conversation about current uh, urgent issues, you know, that the committees that go through you know, like uh, health issues, uh, like a COVID, for instance, you know, and so on. All those issues that uh, people in the community has to be aware of and beyond their communities. So that's quite great. Um, another important issue is water. Water. Water is life, you know. Uh, water is our uh, Mother Earth blood, you know. Water uh, give us, uh, nourish us, give us food, because thanks to water, can, we can feed uh, the, uh, our lands and produce our crops. So uh, we're working with um, Picanchican community in uh, Northern uh, uh, Ontario, you know, and, and, and the initiative of how they can collect water, safe water that they can drink, you know. So water is also another um, important issue that I have seen uh, here from communities uh, to have access to safe water. Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, again, Jose. Um, and, I, and again, just to sort of uh, um, bring Ray into the circle for a minute, uh, when I asked this question, he said that for him, the biggest issue involves uh, the young people the children uh, in indigenous communities across the country. And he specifically mentioned the opioid crisis and also, you know, the whole issue of uh, foster care and, you know, children being taken from communities. So, so this brings us to the third and final question uh, for the panel. And this one asks um, us to look at, uh, look forward, uh, going forward. Um, how, what do you see as hopeful and how do you see Kairos contributing uh, to that chain, that hopeful positive change going forward? And uh, Yvonne, we'll start with you again. I'm at work right now, so it's um, kind of lively around here right now. So I hope you can hear. Um, I was just um, looking through some of the names that are on this Zoom call, and it's so good to see you. <laughs> um, I'm glad that you're all doing well. And um, just, you know, just thinking about all of the work that we've all been involved with, it's been so encouraging. And um, I just want to say congrat congratulations to all of you for you know, putting in the time and, you know, giving it your, your best effort. And um, so congratulations to all of you. So my response to um, moving forward, I thought that um, Kairos has always been um, modeling change. And that has been a huge gift that they have given to all of us, given to me you know, the opportunities that I have experienced um, being part of Kairos in my little community, which is um, deemed isolated, um, that I could feel that I was part of this big moving organization and, you know, doing my part to help make life better for everybody. I think that um, Kairos has also built capacity at local levels um, I witnessed that. I, I'm part of that. Um, you build capacity within me. So I'm very hopeful about that. Um, and I always try to encourage other Indigenous people, not just Indigenous people, but for people to get involved with Kairos. And a lot of people are very interested. So I'm encouraged about that too. I'm excited for new campaigns, the new strategic plan, 
and a stronger force challenging the norms at so many levels. We need to keep pushing those boxes, pushing them open. With all of the global challenges, is uh, with all of the global challenges, it is such a critical time that we are living in, and we all have to do our part. It is certainly one in the forefront of our minds as to how do we continue fanning the fire for change, both for Kairos and I'm speaking about all of the respective churches that are represented here nationally and locally. Sometimes it is the local level where the reconciliation has been difficult to navigate from my personal experience, promoting Kairos initiatives and to bring about change with the need to create space for original voices and telling our own stories. Kairos can continue utilizing its circle of influence and promoting deeper understanding of the act of decolonizing. No pressure, Ed. <laughs> As an intergenerational survivor, I look forward to a safe, fulfilling, fulfilling future for the next generation and generations to come to not experience what we did, that they can have a life full of true opportunities, safety and equality, promoting healing with prayer and standing strong together. We can hope for the TRC calls to action and the calls to justice to be fulfilled and truly honoring the lives of the thousands of women, girls, men, and the LGBTQ2S that have been lost. Mitakiwas, all my relations. Thank you very much, um, Yvonne. Um, you're the junior member on this panel and uh, in the circle, but uh, you bring so much and have so many gifts. And I'm grateful that you've shared some of them with us today. Is it Danamuk? You know, the, one of the good things, actually one of the um, profound realities is uh, all of us in the Americas are living in, in Indian country, North Central and South America, that's all Indian country. And before Columbus got here, we, you know, as, as, ex, as expansive as the territories are, uh, many of us knew each other. You know, we weren't uh, we weren't just uh, inhabiting our own our own sphere of of life. You know, my in my culture, you know, we're on Nosset, which is now Cape Cod, but we knew of the buffalo. You know, and in fact, buffalo had a great range, uh, 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 about maybe two thirds of the continent of the United States was covered with buffalo. In fact you might have heard of Buffalo, New York. That was the most Eastern branch of the Buffalo. Putting that aside, um, the, the fact is, is that we're all inhabiting the ancestral lands in the current lands of Indian country. And uh, maybe put it in another way, there's nowhere anybody in this room can go to get away from us. We're gonna be here. And we're gonna be here with the same message that carried our uh, my ancestors in that, and that is that the love of the, the of all the life around us. You know, I'm otter, I'm turtle. You know, my name translates to the to the owl. You know, we're so much embedded in the land and and life around us. You know, and that you know, I I think that that Kairos has been that model of embracing the unknown and embracing Indian country, and that that's at some point, we stay with this, this journey together. We're, we're in this journey together. Each of you are here because you want to be here. You're part of a, a, a colonial nation state that's still evolving. You know, and, and Kairos is happening, is, 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 is helping to shape what that involvement is. And that's the references I make about deconstructing 
the uh, the false narratives that we've sort of built our our society of values on. You know, we need to check those. You know, we need to um, find that way that we embrace all life, as as uh, my colleagues have been talking about. You know, and just in reference to what Jose was saying, you know, we're very each of us in our bodies are very much a part of the world, a part of the water, as we are a part of the land. You know, um, and it's amazing that we have ceremonies that honor water and honor the earth. You know, and that that has a a, a reverberation back to us. You know, and I believe that that is what awaits the work of Kairos. That's what awaits the the the, the evolution of the Canadian settler state that will no longer be a settler state that will become part of the earth like we are. I think when we get to that point, then life can be assured for the future generations to come. And of course, there's just so much more to talk about and to share in that way, but congratulations, Kairos, my family. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, get the Danamuk. Jose. Thank you. Well, quite inspiring uh, uh, presentations uh, my peers has done so far. Um, I think there's um, uh, an opportunity to praise the work that uh, Kairos um, over 20 years uh, has been able to accomplish. Um, um, uh, in a very important role promoting awareness, uh, education, advocacy, and solidarity for and with uh, indigenous communities, not only at, the, uh, at this uh, national level, but also, uh, as I mentioned before, the International Water Conference also uh, um, promoting the rights of uh, peoples uh, overseas. Um, indigenous communities, for instance, just to make a parallel uh, analysis here um, in Latin America, they, they are um, uh, commemorating uh, the 500 years of uh, uh, so-called independence uh, or arrival of the Spaniards. Um, and um, for Latin American countries, uh, we're lucky that uh, at least uh, uh, three uh, uh, national uh, 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 presidents uh, um, are very aware of uh, indigenous history in those countries, Mexico, Bolivia, and Peru. And they are, uh, um, in a way, challenging the status quo in those countries, the privilege of, uh, in those countries, uh, and exhorting, uh, fostering awareness to the new generation. This is what I see here in Canada. Um, this is what I hear from the early presenters, including uh, my good friend and Ray, uh, young generations. So that's the hope that um, new generation, uh, more aware, uh, more knowledgeable, with ex skills and expertise, can. Uh, uh, have these two ways uh, conversation with the, the government and to be able to sit at the table at the same level to uh, reach that uh, uh, balance of uh, uh, human rights equalities on uh, access to all those benefits that the rest of the Canadians have, you know. Yeah, we see, for instance, um, uh, the, 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 the role that I see, for instance, uh, Kairos, you know, how successful the Kairos has been in bringing all those churches, uh, all those ecumenical groups, you know, for instance, the one that I witnessed and participated very proactively is the uh, 20th anniversary of the 
1987, a new covenant, which is the pastoral statement on towards the constitutional recognition and protection of Aboriginal self-government in Canada. So long, long name, like uh, my job title, you know. But uh, that was, yes, for me, that was uh, a witness and something to really acknowledge and recognize what that work, fantastic work Kairos accomplished, 2007, the 20th anniversary of this uh, new covenant. So if we have Kairos doing that work, you know, how much more we can uh, join them in the effort for the churches to be more, um, let's say, um, inclined to, 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 to act, not just keep promising, you know, uh, sometimes I call it lip service. No, we really want actions, you know, action that people are involved, action that resources are available for those uh, frontline workers do the work like Kairos, for instance, uh, and all those uh, communities uh, carry on with the blanket exercise with local indigenous communities, you know, the uh, uh, sister in spirit, you know, uh, the issues of water, uh, you know, I see uh, Kairos through Irk or Kirk, you know, a strong ally to continue doing this advocacy work this education awareness. And I'll be happy to support for the next 20 years if they're still here. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Um, and just to keep with the with the trend, uh, when when uh, Ray was asked this question, he, he said he's gonna have to think about it. So we'll, we'll get back to you on that one with his answer. But um, I, I, I know we're over time and um, I wish we had uh, so much more time to, to share um, because oh, each of you brings so much to the table uh, through your work and through your life experience and through your dedication to, you know, Indigenous rights, human rights. Um, you know, Yvonne asks us, like, how are we going to decolonize um, Jesus Tanamok, uh, you know, reminds us that, you know, reconciliation is just starting um, and that we need to be patient. And uh, Jose um, brings us, you know, back to remembering the, the future generations and the children and uh, how important those are to this uh, struggle. So um, if... Uh, if there is um, anything that I, I, I can do now is just uh, express like profound and sincere gratitude to each of you for taking the time today to share with us. Um, at the plenary uh, session this morning, Priscilla Solomon, who used to be a Kirk member, uh, mentioned that when Kairos was formed 20 years ago, there was some concerns about you know, the Aboriginal rights work and if it would continue. Um, and, you know, Kairos was formed on July 1st, and the Kairos Aboriginal Rights Committee uh, was held its first meeting on August 31st. Um, so that's where the work began at Kairos. It carried on from the Aboriginal Rights Coalition, from Project North, from the regional groups who were doing um, indigenous rights work from the network groups. And it's through all of that combined work and effort that uh, we have reached the point now today where we feel, as our panelists have said, encouraged, uh, inspired, uh, and looking forward to a future where we actually can affect some kind of change. So thank you again, Yvonne uh, Gizitanamuk and Jose, uh, and thank you as well to all of you out there. I see we're down to 93. We we're at 102 at one point there, but we're ticking away. So I just want to thank you all for just taking the time today, uh, your precious time and sharing it with us. Thank you. <laughs>